what did you ultimately go to Almeida that evening with Alec Buster and his girlfriend Brooklyn? Um, we did. Do, do you remember what Alec was wearing when uh, he went to Almeida? Uh, not precisely. I mean, I, I can't, he was wearing shorts and a T-shirt. I can't tell you details, but it was shorts and a T-shirt, you know, like relaxed shorts. Do you know whether he had had a shower or not? Uh, it appeared he had. Okay. I mean, his, his hair was not, yeah I, I, yeah, I didn't see him in the shower, but I can tell you I think he had a shower. I understand. So then let's move forward to the morning of the June 8th. I, I guess, did you get any sleep the night of June the 7th? Very little. Um, I, I don't know that I fell asleep. I, I've certainly laid in the bed. Um, it just, as you can imagine, just the thoughts and things. It, I don't know if I slept. I, when, I, when, when I got up and started moving the next day, I certainly didn't feel, feel like I'd slept. What did you do the next day when you got up? Um, you, you're talking about precisely or generally? Just generally. Um, I got up and um, Alec was up. I don't think Buster and Buster were. I told Alec that I was going over to Greenfield. My farm that I told you all about is two or three miles away, so it's very close. And I, I have all you know, clo I have plenty of clothes over there. So I told him I was going over there to shower and put on fresh clothes, and that I would meet him at Moselle. And did you go to Moselle? I did after I left Greenfield. Yes, sir. And do you remember who was there when you got to Moselle? I was the first one there. And what did you do? I just went to stay there until I knew Buster, Brooklyn, and Ellick were coming. Um, I suspected that other family members and partners, I, I, I knew others were coming, so I just kind of sat there just, you know, in, just in disbelief still. It's just, you know, moments of, of just... Was, was the door to the house unlocked? Do you remember? You know, that... that that's a good question. Um, I thought about it. I don't remember. Right. Um, it, it either was unlocked or or I had the code because there is a keypad on a on a side door, but I can't tell you which door I went in. I I, I don't know. The uh, did you eventually go down to the kennels? Um, I did. I did. Um, you know. Once everyone got there, there was just there was you know a fair amount of activity in the house with family and, and law partners, um, Alex's law partners, Randy's law partners. Um, you know, I, I just felt like I needed to go down. I needed to see for myself what what had gone on and just you know just kind of take it in. I mean, just maybe for some type of understanding. How long did you stay down? down there at the kennels? Well, I, I can't, I, I don't know. Um, but I will say this, before I went, I was, I was unsure whether I was allowed to go because I, I knew it was a crime scene. And so I reached out to a, um, a friend of mine in law enforcement and, uh, and said, listen, I don't, I don't know who's handling the crime scene. I don't know whatever. He said, well, I'll find out. And, and make sure that it's clear for you to go. And he said, and he said, don't go until you know until I tell you. And he called me back a, sh you know, a few minutes later and said he had spoken to, um, uh, I believe it was uh, Captain Ryan Neal, and had given the the okay that everything was released and it was okay to to go there. And and was it cleaned up? Um, no, Jim, it was not cleaned up. Okay. Were there skull fragments? Yeah, so, you know, so, so, excuse me, oh, this could be really difficult. So I, I could easily see where Maggie had been. You know, I saw the night before where the sheets were, but, and somebody had told me that who was who, and so I could see where Maggie had been, and it was grass, and, you know, they had covered it up with dirt, so there really was nothing to see where Maggie was. Um, I walked over to the feed room, and y'all have heard the descriptions. Y'all saw it. I, I've never seen pictures, and I've told them before coming to this court that I was not going to see pictures. But 
Y'all can imagine what I experienced. It had not been cleaned up. I saw blood. I saw brains. I saw pieces of skull. Or, and, and when I say brains, it, it could just be tissue. I, I don't know what I was seeing. It was just, it was terrible. Um, and for some reason, I thought it was my something that, that I needed to do for Paul to clean it up. I felt like it was the right thing to do. I felt like I owed him. And I started cleaning. And I can promise you, no mother or father or aunt or uncle should ever have to see and do what I did that day. I don't know. I, I, I'm not blaming anybody, but it's just, it, I was just overwhelmed. I, I did everything I could. And I, I would have moments where I would, I would, I would stop crying for a moment. Um, and just, just, you know, just in disbelief. Um, at one point, I called my brother Randy and, and told him what I was doing, trying to describe what I was doing. And he immediately told me to stop doing it. It, it, it was not good for me. It was not healthy for me to be there. And I, I couldn't stop. I just, I had to do it for Paul. That's just what I had to do. Um, and I don't know, it's probably 15, 20 minutes later. Mark Ball shows up. Y'all heard Mark Ball testify. And he came and hugged me and told me it was okay to leave. Okay to leave. What was left of Paul, they would clean it up. It's the hardest thing I've ever been through in my life. Yes, sir. What did you do next? Um, you know, Mark um, basically got me. Uh, I'm sure I'm, uh, I'm sure I was just a basket case, but he got me back to the house and you know got me back around family and you know just got back to you know the support of others that were there and and you know there were a lot of people at the house at that point. Do you remember um, when you got back to the house at some point in time? People uh, raising questions or bringing up the fact that Maggie's phone had not been located. Um, yeah, so that were you know, particular the the lawyers. They were all you know, being lawyers, they were you know questioning things amongst themselves, and you know how could this happen? Trying to figure things out, but but it was brought to my attention that Maggie's phone was not there, and that law enforcement had not found it. And, and I, I can't say that, in fact, it, it, I can probably say that I didn't think of it because I'm not a, uh, 